Call now and say goodbye to crunches forever. Back in the book segment tonight, a movie called Sin City is a big hit. It's one of those film noir deals. Lots of violence, lots of good reviews. Now, whenever I hear the term noir, I know they're going to be heads rolling, eyeballs popping, maybe a little cannibalism to go along with your popcorn. So what's going on here? With us now, Mickey Rourke, one of the stars of Sin City. Remember in Clint Eastwood when he was in Dirty Harry? You were around then. Yeah, you were sure. Then, yeah. Okay. Um, he made these movies that were, you know, kind of violent, but nothing like today. And they killed him. The critics killed him. He was a fascist. He was this. He's that. Now, you got every perversion in the world in this Sin City, and they love it. What's changed? Changing times. In what way? Mm. Um, I think that, well, they up the ante with the violence. You can do more. And you can do more. The critics, though, are the same critics, pretty much. Ebert, these guys, and right. they, they love all of this mayhem, but they didn't like it 30 years ago, and I'm not, I don't understand why. I think with Eastwood's movies and, you know, stuff McQueen did and all them, it was, right. it was the redemption. It was a big thing. You know, now is you know, there's, there's just violence for the sake of violence. Depravity. Depravity seems to be in in Hollywood. Would you say I was wrong? Uh, no. Do you know why it's in? Well, I think the, the whole culture, you know, the, the music has changed. The videos are pretty, uh, pretty out there. You know, yeah. I, mean, I know how you feel about the videos, you know. You've, yeah, and, gangster rap, not, not on our menu. And the game shows, you know. Right. I don't know about those. It's not right. my thing. So you have to stimulate the audience. That it comes from, you know, Right. A hundred times more than you did when uh, Clint Eastwood was Dirty Harry. Right. When you get a script and you see all of this mayhem, I mean, I didn't see, I haven't seen this Sin City. I don't know right. whether I will or not. Right. I did see Kill Bill part one. I was forced to see it. Well, you, know, right. you know, Tarantino knows how to make movies, but do I want to see limbs flying all over the place? I really don't. But when you get a script with all of this violence, do you care? Does it bother you? Uh, it depends. It, it comes with a whole package with. For me, you know, if it has a certain amount of integrity, if who the director is, what what kind of movies he's made, uh, what what the story's about, who else is in the movie. Because this one is pretty violent, this movie, right? Pretty violent. And I knew I was going to speak to you today, and so I, I spoke to the writer of the comic book, because this is a comic book. Right. And there, it's shot in such a stylized, surreal way that you can almost detach yourself from the amount of the violence that's in it, the blood and everything. You can it. if you're an adult. If you're an adult. If, if, you're, if you're 17, living in the inner city, surrounded by violence, I don't know if you're detaching. No. You want me to read what Frank said about violence? A little bit. Frank Miller? You want to read it? Because you could probably read quicker than me. Well, let's see. This is the guy who wrote the movie? Yes. Violence is too big a something. A snuff film is violent. So is Taxi Driver or Seven Samurai. Movies have had a long, worthy history of stylized violence. I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm more interested, though, in the actors. Now, this is a good movie for you, obviously. you got good reviews. You have a big part in it. Mm -hmm. Hollywood's a tough place. Yeah. Um, when you were shooting the movie, did you have any second thoughts about it at all? No, because I had worked with uh, Robert Rodriguez. Uh, he's a director. Before. Right. Um, and he's sort of uh, a lot of, there's a lot of actors that would love to work with there Rodriguez. Are. and. I'm one of them. I've been on the floor with him before. He's a good man. He's prepared. He. Uh, Do you have any kids? No. no. If you had a, if you had a 16-year-old kid, boy, yeah. would you let him see this movie, Sin City? 16 years old. Yeah. Sure. You would. Because you know you haven't seen it. No. Right. I haven't seen it. And it's an entertaining movie because it's from a comic book. Right. Okay. I grant you, it's not Superman or Spider-Man. Thank God. It's much better film than right. either of those. But there's cannibalism, right? Yes, but it's 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 tongue in cheek. It's tongue in cheek. Yeah. Pardon the pun. All right. Pardon the pun. Yeah. All right. Look, I'm I'm not a censorship kind of guy. I've never been that way. If you're an adult, you see what you want, and um, you know, we wish you the best. All right, brother. Thanks for coming in. You got Pleasure it. to see you. Right. And next, we'll wrap things up with the most ridiculous item. Some email.
As a global energy leader, expect big things from ConocoPhillips and watch our performance elevate. It's official, spring is here, and so is Mitsubishi's springtime sales event. The warm weather brings even hotter deals on every Mitsubishi car and SUV. Like the new 2005 Lancer ES. With zero down and 0% APR financing for 72 months, you pay just $189 a month. It's the springtime sales event, and it's going on now for a limited time, only at Mitsubishi. If you have great credit, shouldn't you be treated like you do? At eLoan, you are. With cash out refinancing from eLoan, we process your loan differently. From application to instant decision to appraisal, we do it online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender fees. You get your cash out fast, in as few as 12 days. You've worked hard for your great credit. The difference is, at eLoan, you're rewarded for it. Apply now at eLoan.com or call 1-800-ELOAN-22. What are you doing? Shopping and comparing before I buy. Shop and compare before you buy. Genius. Introducing the new price line. Now you can shop and compare before you buy. Choose great deals on airfare, hotels, rental cars, cruises, and packages. Hey! The new all-in-one price line. Shop, compare, save. Tonight at 2, strong opinion, sharp political insight. The fair and balanced debate is only on Hannity and Combs. Then at 3, more shocking developments in the Jackson case. Get the latest courtroom drama when Greta goes on the record. It's the most powerful primetime lineup on cable news. Tomorrow at 6. I'm Edie Hill. On the next Fox & Friends, the Bolton battle begins. Democrats look to block the president's pick for U.N. ambassador. We've got the blow-by-blow -blow recap from the Hill. Don't miss the number one morning show on all of cable news. Time now for the most ridiculous item of the day, the results of our BillOReilly.com poll. In light of the fact that Congressman Tom DeLay has paid his wife and daughter about a half million dollars since 2001, we asked you, is it wrong for Tom DeLay to pay his wife and daughter with politically donated funds, yes or no? 60% says yes, it is wrong. 40% believe it's okay. So the next time you hear some loons and the factors just watched by conservatives, you can cite that poll. We are watched by independent minded people here. By the way, the poll was sponsored by EmigrantDirect.com, which has given away a thousand bucks. You can sign up for that on BillOReilly.com. No strings attached. Could win a grand. To not sign up would be ridiculous. And finally tonight, the mail poured in over the weekend about our segment on Cardinal Laws, participation at the Pope's funeral, a highly graded segment by BillOReilly.com. Premium members. William Belts, Brighton, Michigan. Bill, you are right about Cardinal Law, and don't you apologize for doing the report on the day the Pope was buried. Law has shamed the church and should not have participated. Bob Curley, Stoughton, Massachusetts. I trust the Pope's decision regarding Cardinal Law, not Bill O'Reilly's. While you have a right to say what you think, your timing was unseemly. Nell DeCarta, Livingston, Texas. I am a Baptist, but felt pain in my heart seeing Cardinal Law at the service. Nancy James, Ventura, California. Bill, thank you for your coverage of the Pope. If you had been able to interview him, what two questions would you have asked? First, how should Christians deal with terrorism? Do we have a right to kill people like bin Laden? And second, why did you give Cardinal Law a nice job in Rome after all the damage the man did to the American church? Those are the two questions I would have asked Pope John Paul. Sheldon Jacobs, Hartsdale, New York. The reason the Posse Comitatus Act was passed back in 1878 was to deter busy buddies like you, O'Reilly. If we need more border guards, we should hire them. The Army has better things to do. Well, the military's mandate is to protect us from invasion, Mr. Jacobs. Wise up, sir. We are being invaded. Juana Moreau, Marrero, Louisiana. I'm Hispanic and want the military on the border. If the government wants our votes, it needs to protect us. George Hersig, Hendersonville, North Carolina. Corporate America wants cheap labor and are big donors to the Republican Party. That's why little has been done about the border. John Pitt, Atlanta. I was required to appear for jury duty down here, and the pool was asked by the assistant DA, does anybody here watch Bill O'Reilly? It was considered a negative. Well, I'm not surprised, Mr. Pitt. Saying you watch the factor can get you out of jury duty all over the country, but with all the corruption in Atlanta, it has special meaning. Dustin Ford, Friendswood, Texas, Mr. O., are you the author of the ever-popular Talking Points memo each day? 
course I am, Mr. Ford. I write the entire program. Dr. Rena Barkana, Tel Aviv, Israel. Here's a fair and balanced opinion from one academic. Blindness toward the war on terrorism is an embarrassment for progressives, just as blindness toward evolution is an embarrassment for traditionalists. And Kelly Herman, Newport, Ritchie, Florida, has a poem for us. On Mother's Day, it would be great to hear for the best mom around, some factor gear. But if the mugs sell out, I'll just have to see if my husband already bought one for me. <laughs> I think I missed a line, Kelly. Your poem was good. I think I blew it. All right? Kelly. See, I told you I write the show. I left out Kelly's big line. Very embarrassing. Anyway, I hope the guy, your husband, bought you the no-spin mugs because they're going out fast. We have them, but hey, I'm telling you, if mom doesn't get it, it's going to be teed off, so get in there early. How about the website? www.fox.com slash O'Reilly. And e please email us with pithy comments. I promise I'll try to get all the poetry in next time. O'Reilly at foxnews.com. O'Reilly at foxnews.com. Name and town. Name and town. Name and town if you wish to opine from anywhere in the world. All right. Is that the email address just came up? We're having a great end of the program here, aren't we? That is it for us today. Thanks for watching The Factor. Please listen to the Radio Factor and check out BillOReilly.com. Hannity and Combs coming up. I'm Bill O'Reilly. See you again next time. Remember, the spin stops right here. So we're looking out for you. Next on Special Report, President Bush and visiting Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon gloss over a disagreement about Israeli settlements as the president applauds Sharon for his plan to withdraw from Gaza. Presidential UN nominee John Bolton runs into hostile questioning from Senate Democrats at his confirmation hearings. Did they change any votes? We'll find out. And we'll show you what happened with a man with some suspicious luggage caused a partial evacuation of the Capitol. And one House Republican says he wants Tom DeLay gone. Will that hurt DeLay? First, other headlines. Hello, everyone. I'm David Folk Thomas. The calendar says spring, but Colorado residents are digging out from a weekend blizzard. It left the state under almost two feet of snow. The storm closed highways, schools, and airports. A 200 mile stretch of busy Interstate 70 was shut down for 27 hours. About 2,000 travelers were stranded overnight when flights were canceled at Denver International Airport. The Shiite Muslim terror group Hezbollah claims it sent an unmanned spy plane over Israel Monday in retaliation for Israel's recent recon missions over Lebanon. Israel regularly fought with Hezbollah forces during its 18-year occupation of southern Lebanon. A huge fire breaking out at a TV center in Moscow, bringing Russia's president to the scene. 30 fire engines responded to the site. 27 people fled the building. Russian President Vladimir Putin had just flown in from Germany. He surprised firefighters when he rushed from his plane to the fire. No one was injured. And North Korea, locked in a stalemate over its nuclear policy, says it's now stressing food and energy production. The communist country opened its parliament session, setting its top priorities. Its economy is in decay after decades of drought and chronic power shortages. More than a million North Koreans have died of famine since the mid-1990s. And our next update is at the bottom of the hour. Special report starts right now. Welcome to Washington. I'm Brett Hume. Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon is paying his first visit to President Bush at the president's ranch in Crawford, Texas, talking about the roadmap to peace in the Mideast. Fox News Chief White House correspondent Carl Cameron reports their disagreements were evident, though not emphasized. Amid escalating tensions in the Middle East, President Bush and Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon disagreed over the expansion of Jewish Mr. settlements in the West Bank. I've been very clear about Israel has an obligation under the roadmap. There's no expansion of settlements. But Sharon's government announced last week, right before this meeting at the president's Crawford, Texas ranch, that it would add 3,500 new apartments to its largest West Bank settlement and continues to consider some West Bank settlements part of Israel. With the president at his side, Sharon argued nonetheless that Israel is honoring its interpretation of the U.S. brokered roadmap to peace. I will fulfill my commitment to you, Mr. President, 
to remove unauthorized outposts.